Have you ever seen the ducklings are following the mother duck in a single fine line? Do you know why? So I'm Ximing Yuan, and I am a researcher at the University of Strathclyde at Scotland. Over the last few years, I tried to find the reason why these ducklings are following the mother duck in a single fine line. The story starts in a trip to Oxford some years ago when I used my mobile phone. I take a photo and it perfectly capture a group of gooselings swim behind the mother in a single fire. Try to find the reason. I searched on Google. However, all the answers there cannot convince me. So I try to look for the scientific publications on the flying birds. So there's so many papers published in that subject about the V-shaped formation of the swimming birds. So while they are doing so, it is believed that the trailing birds, they are making use of the energy from the vortexes from the leading one. So in that way, they can preserve the energy. So I'm wondering if we can use the same theory to explain the darklings when they are swimming in the water but my conclusion is no. The reason is that when the moving body is moving on the free surface, it's going to generate waves rather than vortices. So waves can be observed after the mother duck. And my hypothesis is that the waves are the driving force to make this duckling to swim behind the mother duck. So they are making use of the energy from the waves behind the mother. Actually, for the researchers working on the ship hydrodynamics, there is a well-established method to do the calculation of the wave-making resistance as well as the waves generated by a vessel. So what I did in my research is that I just used the same method, but I replaced the ships with the duck and ducklings. I do the calculation just do a calculation with a similar way. So I can get the waves generated by the, by the formation. I can get the resistance of each, each individual and this formation. And the first step to do is that I calculate the wave making resistance of a single duck, of a single duckling when it is swimming independently. And then I take it back to swim together with the mother to record what is the resistance again. So I compare this one angle formation with that one independently. So if the resistance is smaller in a formation swimming, so I believe that position is a position to save energy. So in this case, we can eventually find a map. So in this map, we can identify the area where the ducklings can save energy. So if this duckling is clever enough in that map, they should stay in position A rather than in position B because a red region in this map shows that region of drag reduction. So that is a position, the positions the duckling should stay in. Of course, well, if uh, one of the duckling is not that clever, it may move a little bit forward to position B. So in that position, she is going to spend twice as much as energy to keep swimming with the same speed as a mother duck. So that is definitely not the best of the position for this duckling to swim. And uh, from this map, we can, all, we can also conclude that the, the, the position right behind this mother duck is of particular interest. So we can just let a duckling 
swimming right behind the mother duck from very far away and getting close to this mother duck and we can calculate the wave resistance curve. A change with the position. And most importantly, this curve is fluctuation all the time. And it will experience a series of wave energy saving peak. And in this peak, they achieve the maximum energy saving. So we believe this position is the positions that ducklings prefer to stay. If we put the ducklings virtually into this position, so we can find a single fine line with uniform gap between each two individuals. It's also very interesting to see what happens when the ducklings are staying in position A. So we calculate the waves generated by the mother duck and we find if the ducklings stay in position A, its fore part is in the wave trough, but the, the, the after part of the duckling is in the crest. In such case, this duckling could ride the waves generated by the mother duck. It's like wave serving. So in that case, mother duck is generating the wave for this duckling to serve. And we call this phenomenon as wave riding. But unfortunately, if a, if a duckling is not clever enough, it stays in position B. So what happens is that the fore part of, duck, of this uh, duckling is located in the wave crest, while the aft part is in the, in, in the trough. And in this position, a duckling seems to climb up a hill and she definitely needs to spend more energy to overcome the resistance. So the wave riding could explain the behavior of a single duck when it is following the mother. You may probably ask me, well, what happens if you have dozens of ducklings behind the mother? Since the energy has been utilized by the first duckling in a queue, so it seems not to be fair for the rest of the ducklings to, to receive the benefit. So to answer this question, I continue to do the modeling. I model two duck. I model two ducklings, I model three ducklings, I model four, five, even six in the queue and try to find the best formation and also to quantify for each individual how much percentage of the wave energy saving can be achieved. So with that uh, calculation and eventually I get a number. So from this number it can be concluded that the first two ducklings could preserve the most of the energy. Starting from the third one is quite a surprising conclusion. Starting from the third one in a queue, no matter how many individuals it has, they always achieve the same amount of the energy saving. So in that case, a perfect dynamic equilibrium was achieved. So in this equilibrium, each individual serves as a wave passer, pass the waves to the trailing one to ride. So I call this phenomenon as wave passing. Let's have a look at what's happening with the waves and this optimal queue. So when the formation is optimized in a single fire, so the system will generate minimum amount of the waves. The waves generated by the mother duck and the ducklings, they are partly cancelled with each other. And this is the destructive wave interference. But if these ducklings are form a west formation, if they change the position and form a west one, so what happens is that the waves generated by the leader will be amplified by these ducklings. And a constructive wave interference is observed and wave becomes huge and, and the entire system need to do a lot of work to maintain this wave energy. As a naval architect, learning from these ducklings inspired me a lot. So myself and my research team is now working on designing a marine chain. So we just replaced this mother duck with a locomotive and the ducklings is replaced with the carriages. 
So in this way, we learn the formation from the duckling. And if the distance between H2 carriages are adjusted to a perfect position, this marine chain could potentially take more cargo, but with minimum fuel consumption. So I hope in the last 10 minutes, I convinced you successfully the wave passing and wave riding is the reason to drive these ducklings swimming behind the mother duck. I also hope my research make you laugh and more importantly, make you think deeply. <laughs> <laughs>